Welcome to Why ClickUp is the fastest growing PM tool for digital agencies. We're going to go through a lot to cover. Um, so just to give you a kind of a quick overview of what we're going to tackle here in this webinar, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on ClickUp versus the competition to start. We're going to dive into the nine key areas of ClickUp that I think agencies ought to use. And we're also going to talk openly about uh, where ClickUp is the right fit for an agency and also where we think it's probably not the right fit. Um, for an agency, what the you, you need to be realistic about what tools we're hiring. So this is not a um, we don't get paid by ClickUp to do that. Do this. This is uh, the business that we run is uh, around helping agencies optimize for success. And I'll tell you a little bit about our background. So we are not um, we're not just uh, ClickUp folks. We're in the business of getting agencies ops results. So. That said, let's go ahead and get started here. We'll dig deep into the platform as we go. I am Gray McKenzie. I'm one of the co-founders here at ZenPilot. Andrew is my co-founder. We're the SEAL Team 6, one of the Special Forces uh, crew for Agency Ops. And we're um, a, one of ClickUp's premier implementation partners. We're the largest implementation right, partner right now for ClickUp. Uh, we've worked with over 2,000 agencies. And the background or the backstory to this was we actually, Andrew and I, um, co-founded a startup called Do Inbound, and we built a project management tool explicitly for inbound agencies uh, back in 2013 when we were running our own agency, Guava Box. Built that, scaled it to a little over 500 agencies, um, and we were doing a ton of agency coaching. Along the way, we found out that the tool was not the fundamental problem. The fundamental problem was the systems and processes that agencies needed to scale. So, uh, we had a, a decision to make back in end of 2017, early 2018, where we're going to be a coaching and training company, which got the right results, but was way less sexy, or where we're going to be a software company and compete with the big boys in the project management uh, space. And we decided to optimize for what we were trying to solve the whole time, which was the agency operations uh, challenges, the, the challenge of trying to scale a services business um, in the digital marketing space. And so we went through 71 different PM tools over six months. We wound up choosing ClickUp as the tool to implement. And we thought there was a lot of um, a lot of value in specializing in one specific industry and area that we knew inside and out, and then one specific tool. So we could both have kind of the high level, here's the value of, of the high level systems and processes down to the granular, how do you actually execute on that? So that's our quick background and um, with that said, I want to jump right into ClickUp versus the competition here um, and talk through what the different players are in the space. So I pulled a slide here. I, I pulled a handful of different things. But, but what we see all the time, and actually when we went through the tools back in, um, when we've made our final decision in 2018, Asana, ClickUp was the one that obviously we chose to partner with. Asana was number two, Teamwork was number three, all the rest of the big players, Monday, um, Reich, Trello, Basecamp, you know, there, all, all those names were um, kind of tossed around. Notion was relatively early on. But this is a slide from G2 Crowd, um, which is one of the two main review sites uh, here in the US. And this is looking at the momentum leaders in the PM uh, space. And so ClickUp is just kind of blown up. They raised no money until the summer of 2020. So a year ago, they raised $35 million. Then in December, they raised another $100 million at a billion dollar valuation. And they're growing really quickly, but they're uh, growing in the agency space at an even faster rate. And there's a few different markets that they're growing very quickly in. And there's there's a handful of distinct reasons for them, uh, for that happening. And so you can see there's a handful of other players. We've got Asana, Monday, Airtable and Notion we bump into. Trello we don't see super often in the agency space. Um, depend, depending on team size, very popular with early stage agencies as larger teams grow. Typically, some of the, uh, the two of the most common ones that we see agencies outgrow are Trello and Basecamp because they both struggle with high level visibility. Um, and then you've got other platforms like uh, a teamwork. And so we'll talk through and I'm going to weave a lot of that into um, what we're jumping through in ClickUp here today. Cool. So as we, as we dig into ClickUp, I'm just going to give you a, a super high level overview of what we're going to dive into. And then we're going to go real deep and specific. Throw your questions in the Q&A um, pane and we'll, we'll get to those. We've got time at the end here. to Jump through all the questions and answers. So we're going to talk through ClickUp's hierarchy, why it is preferable as an agency versus tools like Asana, uh, Basecamp, and Trello. 
talk through uh, views for each role. Uh, folks using Monday often have a um, big challenge with kind of the high level overview of where things stand. And so we'll talk about some of the different differences and distinctions between those different tools. A lot of the project management specific tools. So this is where Notion is absolutely awesome for docs and you've got all these blocks that are super flexible, but it's missing a lot of the project management tools and a tool like Airtable suffers from the same thing where it's not built fundamentally as a project management tool, but they're awesome for uh, database management. And so ClickUp kind of blends those two things together and we'll talk through what those specific features look like and how agencies are leveraging those. I'm going to show you actual examples um, in all this stuff. We'll walk through what that enables in terms of resource management, workload allocation, the dashboards and reporting. So teamwork is one of my favorite platforms outside of uh, ClickUp, but where it struggles for a lot of users outside of the UI and UX and kind of the, the personal preferences of what the tool ClickUp is definitely a more modern interface for teams and easier to use, but flexibility in terms of dashboards and reporting. We'll look at your agency's account dashboard. This is something you can take and build really in, in most platforms you could build out, but why this is so key and how we do it specifically in ClickUp. Talk through the templating. Um, this is, there's a lot of variants in tools around templating. This is one of the things that we did get right with our software back in the day and uh, it has been hard to find. And I think there's a lot of room still in the space for improvement. Talk through some of the native automations and what that empowers and then how to work with guests. So agencies all need to work with, uh, work with specific other users, whether that's contractors or clients, and we'll dig into each of those pieces. Cool. So that said, I'm going to jump right into um, the ClickUp interface here. And you can see, I'm just going to give you the super quick orientation. Left-hand side is our main menu. Uh, top side, I've got um, a bunch of favorites pinned, and then there's some um, items specific to the view that I'm in right now. But you can see I've got all of my work, the way that the work is broken down in the hierarchy is demonstrated and displayed on the left-hand side here. So we break every agency into three main pieces. This works super well with ClickUp's spaces concept. There's growth, which is your um, client acquisition, you know, your marketing, your sales, business development. Delivery, which is just our vernacular for client services. Um, what needs to happen to deliver work for each client. And then operations is all your backend, people, culture, HR, legal, finance, uh, type of stuff. And so those are all broken down. And then when you can see, we've got a CRM and a process library and we'll get to those, but those are not, we've got these three core areas of the business, two additional spaces. And that makes up the five core spaces that we build um, in most agency implementations. So I'm going to go into inside of these spaces. We then have this layer that's folder. So we've got a folder in this case for each client. And depending on what services they're receiving, we've then got a list for each one of those services, whether that's um, branding and design or website redesign or email marketing or paid social or SEO. All of those are built out. And so what we have here is we've got three layers of hierarchy where most other platforms, if you're using an Asana, you've got projects and then you've got tasks and subtasks. Or if you're using a Basecamp um, or a Trello, you're kind of in the same place where you've got a board and then you've got a card and then you've got tasks and subtasks. We get a couple extra layers of hierarchy, which suit, works super well for a service-based business like an agency where you've got a client and inside that client, you may have specific projects or service lines that need to be reported on. And we'll talk when we get into the actual, the next levels in the, in the hierarchy about why that's important and how that's helpful. So then we've got um, each of these kind of parent tasks will equate to a deliverable, something that we're producing for a client, a blog post, or we need to get them onboarded or our monthly reporting meeting or, um, you know, a phase or a phase or a milestone in a website project. Inside of each of these deliverables, then we've got a subtask. And our rule of thumb for any subtask is one person, one sitting. We want an individually assigned and owned piece of the process. And so here's all the different steps that need to happen to complete client onboarding uh, down through the kickoff call, make sure we've got everything set up correctly and we've got the right access to tools. And then inside of that, the last level of detail here becomes our checklist and our integrated process where we're giving the team member who's responsible for doing this, not only the assignment, but what specifically they need to do. So we're taking anybody who's got a base level of competency in that role and they can go through and complete it. So that's the hierarchy all the way from at a high level, these spaces, areas, components of the agency down to clients, down to service lines, down to deliverables, tasks. And then, uh, and then the checklist for how to do 
each of those pieces. That hierarchy um, has been really helpful because most of the features, you know, once you get into a subtask, there's a lot of uh, similarities in different PM tools. You know, every tool has to integrate with Google Drive and Dropbox and Box and whatever the file storage things are. Every tool has to either have integrated time tracking or, um, in, you know, native time tracking or integrations with other parties. There has to be a due date and a signee. ClickUp has dependencies and some of these things that we'll talk about here in a moment. But all of this information rolls uphill. So if I track 10 minutes here on this specific task, that's then going to roll uphill where my time tracked has now been added to uh, each of the other items that I have. Um, and those will accumulate at the parent task level, which will roll up to the list level, up to the client level, and so on and so forth. Same thing if I'm on a list here for client onboarding, if I wanted to see this at a client level, I can go see it and create all these different views at a specific um, client level. So that hierarchy becomes really helpful as you climb up. You know, I want to see across all clients what's going on or across the entire agency or just what's going on in operations or just what's going on for this group of clients. I can go create those views for each of those pieces. So that's number one is ClickUp's hierarchy and that blends seamlessly into the views, which is the real power of ClickUp which is you can take any underlying data here and you can visualize it and produce it for the right person at the right time in the right way. So if you are an engineer and you like to see everything on board view and move your cards through because you're used to coming from Trello or from Jira and, and moving things through the process, you can take all the same underlying data. You can figure out how you want to filter it and say, you know, I just want to see my specific work or I want to grab whatever it is. I want to group it differently. I want to show different items on each of these cards. I want to show pictures or I want to have whatever. I can do that and I'm using the same workflow however I want to see it. So if I'm a list type of person, I can see it here. If I'm a board type of person, I can see it there. If I like to see it on a calendar or in Gantt view, I can go grab it and I can see the data in any place. And then the coolest part is inside of any of these views, we can take um, any of these properties and we can hide them or show them or run calculations on them as we're moving. So if you're used to using something like Monday, this pairs really well with what you might be used to from a Monday in terms of kind of the database features of being able to run calculations on um, different items and have different properties. If you're coming from a tool like Basecamp or Trello, this is going to be a little bit more foreign. And so I'll just show you a couple actual examples where We'll take client onboarding as an example. Here's what it would look like when we're live, where we show the assignee, we wanna show the due date, how much time's estimated for it, how much time's actually been tracked to it, any comments that have happened uh, on this or leave comments directly from here, how long it's been in, this, in the specific status that it's in. So I could take that, but at the same time, if I'm building out my templates, I don't actually know who's the assignee yet. I don't, time tracking's irrelevant. And so I've taken and we've hidden those properties, you know, most of the properties that we had before. We don't need comments there. Um, but now we've added in roles. And we'll talk more about how we use automations to pull things together later. So that's uh, kind of the view when we're in individual list views. And then if we roll up, I'm going to go up to the everything level for a second. So now we're looking down, if you can imagine this from the top, down across all spaces, folders, lists, tasks, et cetera. And now I've got a view here. It's filtered down for just me. It's filtered down to specific locations. It's filtered down to tasks that have a due date. And I could add another filter here to say, I don't want to look at things where I'm blocked. I don't want to see anything using dependencies, which we'll get to in a second where I, where I can't use it, but I don't have it set up in this example. And now you can give every individual contributor on your team the ability to have, and really everybody, the ability to see what's all my work for the day outlined. It's grouped by due date shows the context, and it's got the step-by-step -step process of what I need to complete directly inside of this. I can now give them that list with how long it's expected to take, and I can go in to start my day and say, okay, here's what's on my plate. Here's what I'm cleared to do. I've got three hours worth of work. That's great. I can work ahead, or I can go help somebody else, and they get a lot of clarity in, what they, in terms of what they need to do. But from a management level, you create the same view and say, hey, I just want to see this for my specific team. Um, so I want to look at what does Brandon have on his plate today? Or what is what is one specific person? If I set the assigning differently, we'll just flip over here to uh, to Brandon. What's on what's on Brandon's plate? What does he have? Or group this to have multiple people shown here. If I want to look at it across the calendar, see everything that's going out across the agency. Or this is the next piece in here, which is 
the workload, uh, the workload view, um, which kind of ties in here as well, which is what do people have on their plate and where are they open? So ClickUp's got another view called box view, which is really helpful to see kind of the overall load that people may have. And we could sort it in different ways. We can see what, what people have on their plate. I'm just going to pull this over to time estimates for a second. So now I can see, you know, over the next, uh, whatever period of time Brandon has, depending on what filters I have, Brandon has 15 hours of work done, but that's not that helpful if those 15 hours are all due today. So a view like workload, which breaks it down and shows me on a day by day basis, what's on someone's plate, makes it really easy to see who's got some capacity and can help out and where can I move things up? Where do I need to move things back as I'm building things through? Cool. So that's, we've covered a bunch of stuff with views and we'll get into a couple more examples when we get down into the CRM side as well. But the two views I'd like to leave you with to be aware of are kind of a list view. When you're live, if you're already a ClickUp user, uh, having um, kind of standardizing each of these views across the, um, across the entire setup. And then a separate set of ideas for a template view where we're then going to use these delivery roles or custom fields for different items to go through and use in automations as we move a little farther down the road. This next piece, which is how ClickUp has integrated time tracking dependencies and custom fields to ClickUp, if we just take ClickUp versus Asana as an example, you can get all three of these. Well, you can get dependencies and custom fields in Asana. They don't have a time tracking tool, but you can build an integration with Harvest and for $10 a month per user, you can have uh, Harvest or sign up for an ever hour or toggle or something and plug those in. And if you upgrade to ClickUp's um, or Asana's kind of premium plan at $30 a month per user, you can get dependencies and custom fields and some of the automation stuff as well. So a lot of other platforms have this type of tool. What's nice about ClickUp is it's all integrated. So I'll pull up like a uh, We'll jump over to SEO for a second and just say we're running uh, SEO questionnaire. We're setting them the template. What's really nice about this is we can hook up dependencies between different items and we can say, um, you know, here's the, here's what um, this specific um, task is blocking or this specific task is waiting on uh, something else. And what that allows you to do is then trigger notifications when something gets done it may not be due for three more days, but we notify a team member that, hey, this is open. You can now get started on it. Um, and there's some cool things you can do with dependencies where you can automatically reschedule things. Uh, if you've got dependent tasks and you know this gets bumped, it's super common in the agency world. The client says, it's actually not as important as I thought it was. Let's bump that back a week. Or, hey, I can't get you that feedback today. Let's bump it back two days or whatever. Um, we'll go through and uh, and move the date of one subtask here and with an option and click up, you can have all the rest of them sequentially also reorder their due dates as well. So dependencies built in natively are super helpful. Time tracking and time estimations are um, also super nice to have directly related to the tasks themselves. So it's really clear how long is this supposed to take me? I always tell teams, don't stress about what the estimate says, get the job done right, get it done well. And over a period of time, if it's something that you do frequently, you might be able to update this every month or three months. And if it's something that you, know, you need more, a uh, larger sample size to reorder your priorities on, um, you, know, you might look at that every six months to, to update your time estimates. But where we're setting a target and when we're intentionally tracking our time to make sure that we've got some visibility into where we're going. And if you do that all correctly, what that gives you is it gives you the ability in this specific setup to see if we look back over time, What's our profitability for clients along th or profitability as an agency along three main vectors, which are uh, profitability by each client, profitability by each specific service line and profitability by each team member. And all three of those are important to optimize as you're building and scaling out a profitable agency. Custom fields, I mentioned the role custom field. There are a lot of different custom fields. We're going to look at one here in just a moment on the account dashboard when we get there. From a resource management perspective, there's a couple different tools that we use. The workload view is one. We use some external cost tracking in many cases, especially if teams are working with contractors. Um, we can pull into that in the 
sake for the sake of time, I'm going to skip by that one for now. And I'm going to go straight to dashboards and unlimited reporting. But if anyone's interested, just drop it in the um, chat and we can come back to some of the external cost tracking as well here during Q&A. So we're generating all this data. We're building out uh, all kinds of um, different work. And this is obviously the goal of ClickUp of any PM tool is to be your single source of truth for where your agency lives and works. And we know, hey, did you put that in email? Did you put that in Drive? Did you put that in Excel? Did you put that in Docs? Did you put that in Slack? Where did that go? We're trying to eliminate all of that and build it all natively into ClickUp. So dashboards, and I showed you some of the views at the everything level, but dashboards are super helpful, whether it's internally, trying to see you know, how do we perform, it's purely metrics around internal, like what activity uh, got done and where do things stand right now. Um, I'm gonna show you all an example real quickly. This is both a pro and con of ClickUp. When you go into ClickUp and you build a new dashboard, you wind up with a blank slate. You're kind of starting from scratch. And it's super cool because you can customize and build whatever type of report you want to build inside ClickUp. The downside is a blank canvas is uh, means that you've got to figure out first, what do I actually want to visualize? And then do I have the right setup to build it all? So that's part of the value that um, we bring to our clients when we're working with them is we lead them through, hey, here's what you should be optimizing for. Tell us what, what goals you have. And then here's the metrics that we would look at based on our experience. And then run through, okay, here's how to design the system to get that, and then how to build the dashboards to visualize that data. So you can you can build that all. And I'm going to show you a couple examples of what we use with, with agencies over and over. One is this internal click completer board that I just showed you. It's just kind of making sure that everyone's um, running along. We use this for our daily spot checks in ClickUp. We'll often have kind of an overview for each client, what what may need to happen, what folks should be um should be optimizing for. And so we're looking at things like, hey, how are we coming along on progress? You know, what are we overdue on? What's been happening? How much time is estimated versus tracked? Um, all those types of tasks. In a few cases, there'll be a client facing dashboard. Really depends on the agency type, how popular this is. But uh, some folks will wanna share quite a bit with clients. Some folks want them to stay out of their ClickUp. That's a longer conversation to get into. Um, skip over some of the, I'll, I'll pull this up just as an example, but uh, you know, some teams will use a personal dashboard, some teams will just use a view, but get a quick overview. So you may want this if you're managing a small team, uh, you may want this as a, a dashboard for your direct reports. It'll often be an estimated versus actual. Um, so this is where we're starting to get into time as a proxy for profitability on a client by client basis, um, team member by team member basis any of those things. And there's a handful of other um, dashboards that will commonly run through, but those are a few of the most frequent ones. I think the thing to keep in mind with any tool that you're hiring to help out from a project management perspective is you need to set the targets. You need to understand what you're trying to optimize for rather than getting in and starting to play with buckets. We hear a lot of frustration from agencies who feel like they can't get the metrics out of ClickUp that they want or can't get the metrics out of their current tool. And, um, Often there's a, the tool is, is kind of a small component. It's generally, hey, what tool, what metrics should we actually be met, um, looking for and optimizing for? And then what's the best way to get that back out of your uh, project management infrastructure? ClickUp's got um, a whole bunch of different reporting features. And for most items, uh, if you want to measure it, uh, there's, a, there's a way to get it out of ClickUp. I'm gonna take you to a different, we call this an account dashboard, but this is not truly a dashboard. So now we're gonna look briefly at the CRM side of things. And this is where we measure, and I'd be curious to know if you have this in your uh, portal right now, or in your whatever PM tool you're using, or if you, even if it's in a Google Sheet, drop in the chat, let me know if you have this built already or haven't built it yet, but we've basically got, we're only using this in this example for once, uh, once a contact has become a customer. And so we've got an actual CRM built out here where we're building relationships between deals, company records, and contact records. But I'm going to focus ex exclusively here on the deal side of things. Um, 
we get each of these projects that are going on, each of these clients are a specific deal. We've got the status, whether they're onboarding active or offboarding, who the account manager, the lead strategist leading the project is. We'll walk through the due date in just a second. What services they've purchased, the health of that account. This is a score that uh, gets standardized and measured consistently. Uh, we use an integration um, internally to use a tool called Retently, which measures our NPS. And that gets pushed through to help calibrate. You know, if we if, if I saw an NPS score that was a 10 for Webflow or for HubSpot here, but they're actually a two from our internal health score, something's probably a little bit off. And so what's the disconnect there? You know, what the target might be, where they stand from a billing perspective, start date, end date, who's taking point on what from a client services perspective, revenue. We'll, we'll track all this stuff. And these are all custom fields um, th that are put together. But once these are built out, what becomes really cool about any of this is then we can create different views to see if I wanted to see just our leads that weren't yet customers. If I wanted to track that, we'll have deals or deal boards. If I want to see clients who've churned, I could go grab uh, clients who have churned and calculate and quantify what's the primary reason that they churned from the agency. And we want to track that and look at that over time to figure out what do we need to be improving. We'll look at things like length. Obviously, as an agency, you've got uh, a couple main triggers for how profitable you are, how much ultimate, you know, what the lifetime value of an account actually is. You've got what's the amount they actually pay you. So if there's a way to create upsells or increase your value to the client and increase the value that you then capture in return, uh, that's one way. And then the other way for any agency that operates on retainers or with reoccurring revenue is to uh, influence the length that they're with you. So that retention rate becomes really important. And the account dashboard has been one of the tools that we use consistently with agencies to help optimize for that. So if we've got clients here who are on a weekly meeting, we'll set up a calendar view. I'll just show you a quick example of creating a view here. Um, we'll just call this view client meetings. We'll do a calendar and we're gonna change a couple of things. Let's change this to, let's just look at a week at a time. Let's go into settings and instead of coloring these tasks by status, we're going to change these to a custom field and choose health. And I'd probably make a handful of other changes to what gets shown here in this, uh, in the calendar view. But actually we'll go ahead and we'll add in a couple here. So let's add in who's the delivery lead on each of these. Um, and there's, there's a handful of other things that I would probably also add into this view. But what I'm trying to see is when are these calls coming up? I have it color coded here by um, by client health. And so I can see oh, this SEMrush call. I should probably jump on that one if I'm managing a bunch of accounts. They have a low health score. Maybe we're okay with these ones. I don't know what the health is with each of these. And so anyways, you can create these different views. One view that we use also internally, if you have, in fact, let's just click on one of these. Let's see if we have a custom field for address in here. So we don't have address in here, but let's say we did have, let's just go ahead and add an extra field. And so if we were gonna create a new field, we'd pick location and we just say, you know, uh, company address. Now this will, in this case, this would actually live on the company level, but then we could create a map to go in and view where our clients live. So if we flip over to companies as an example, you can see we've got their address, we've got their URL, team size, all this information. And then if we want to visualize all those clients on a map, we can do that same thing. We could change our color here by, uh, you know, if we had something that we were, we were pulling through, we could recolor these as well. And then obviously the third piece is contacts. So each of these contacts, this is where we're pushing in NPS scores that is, are then getting rolled up and shown at, at other levels in the tool. But that's how we're managing and optimizing for um, each of our client accounts, staying on top of them. And then each week we have our account manager or strategist put in uh, an update on how the account went over the past week or how the last call went with clients. Cool. So that's on the account dashboard side of things. The templating side of ClickUp, we build um, any, any client who we're working with, we want to build out all of the processes that power the services that they're delivering for clients. And then eventually their internal processes as well, all of that should get centralized. 
So here in our process library, this is where we keep the latest version of all of these uh, processes. So let's just go into client management as an example, we'll go back to onboarding since we've already looked at that example. We will pre-build, here's the task, here's the uh, person who's assigned to the, or the role that's assigned and responsible for it, the estimated amount of time and the due date, build out all of these steps, um, hook up the dependencies, make sure that we're ready to go in terms of uh, the entire workflow there. Once that's all built, we can take any list, we can turn it into a template, we can take a task, turn it into a template, but we'll take the entire folder. Um, you can also do the same thing with spaces, but typically we'll, we'll build these all out into a consistent kind of pre-built client folder template and have all of those pre-built into a template. So, you know, what are, what are the common things that we're doing when a new client comes on board? We're doing strategy, we're doing reporting, and we do email marketing or we do HubSpot implementation or something along those lines. Um, so all of that we wanna have pre-built into a template so that when we're adding a new client, new client signs on board, and we're creating a new client folder, we're gonna go into our templates and we'll grab a new client example. We'll use the template and we'll call it a uh, new client, whatever the actual client name would be. So this is Dunder Mifflin, goes into delivery. We're gonna import things. Here's where ClickUp's flexibility becomes really powerful. It allows us to remap dates. So we can say, look, here's a start date that we wanna start the project on. And when we're remapping, do we wanna skip weekends, keep weekends, however it wants to work, or we could go the opposite way and go to end date. Um, use the template. It'll build out all of those tasks uh, for us. It'll remap the due dates. Um, and then we can go through and set assignees, fine tune anything that we need to. I wanna talk a little bit more about assignees here in a second, but that's the power of templates. And we can do the same thing. Let's say we're inside a client. Um, I'll go into inbound for this specific client. I'm just gonna hit the hot key and click up for T, which is task. You can see it's got uh, some of the different hotkeys in here. But I'm gonna say uh, blog post and I can go, I'm using a slash command and click up here to apply a template, go grab my blog post template, apply it, create the task. If there's anything I need to change, hit command enter and go create that task from those templates. So templates, super powerful in ClickUp. I'm happy to get into more examples of what that looks like. Um, and in the process library, I feel like I get asked about this a lot. What are the types of things in our process library? So we've got you know, client management side of things. This is what you do regardless of service line, onboarding, strategy, reporting. Obviously, there'd be some distinctions. Um, then you've got client services. So whatever your specific services are, you want to build out templates and workflows for each of those. Obviously, we've got a bunch uh, pre-built since we work with agencies and tackling the same kind of thing over and over. Uh, operations, you know, what are you building out there? Same thing if we were managing whatever tech stacks or team directories that kind of build out what all of this should look like. Cool. The next thing in here is native automations. So I'm going to skip over the external integrations that ClickUp has, whether that's a direct one-to-one -one integration with a uh, time tracking tool like Harvest or with Google Drive and Dropbox or Google Calendar or Outlook or whatever the platforms are. I'm just gonna talk about automations in the platform. This is a powerful component in ClickUp. Let's just go back to onboarding to use as an example. So just like any automation tool, you've got a trigger and then an event that happens. So if you go in and add an automation in ClickUp, you've got this whole list of triggers you can pull from. And we can do things like saying, hey, have all subtasks been completed? Then for a parent task, and I'll just show an example, we wanna change the status to complete, create, and our automation is ready to go. And there's a whole bunch of different ways that you might you might want to say, hey, when a new task gets created and there's a condition that is this custom field is equal to uh, delivery role and the value is the strategist, then I want to change the assignee and set Andrew as the assignee every time, create that automation. So as an example, let's just go over to inbound again for a second and say, hey, when this blog post, it's assigned to somebody, but there's no specific action. All the actions are laid out in our subtasks specifically already. 
So when all of these subtasks get completed, somehow this needs to get completed as well. So that's where we use an automation to close out uh, those types of things. Or we might look at something like from a CRM perspective, we've got an intake form, we're taking information from a client, they're filling out all this, all this information. Once we get a new form submitted, then we're going to go in and um, create, you know, here's who needs to do what. We're going to create a task over in delivery to go set up the client work, whatever, whatever we need to do. We can use automations to build that out. And the last one is uh, permissions and guest management. So this is one of the most flexible things about ClickUp. This is one of the reasons that we chose it was we could, uh, we can go ahead and uh, be super customizable in terms of how we handle permissions. So I'm gonna grab, let's go back to SEO for a second here. Let's say I'm just running technical SEO analysis with a contractor. I can share anything in ClickUp from a task level with a specific guest. And there are some things to be aware of. So ClickUp's pretty generous with their guest uh, permissions inside of a, um, inside of the tool. You can share as many as you want in terms of you can pull read only guests in for free, but for every paid seed that you have with ClickUp on the business plan, you get five or enterprise plan, you get five additional guest seats um, to share stuff with as you need to work with folks. So if you're a team of 10 and you're working with five contractors or you could work with 40 contractors and have them all pulled in and that'd be fun. Most frequently, uh, rather than sharing individual tasks, we'll see these shared either at the list level or at the at the client level if you're using guests now you can do the same thing you can take members and you can say hey i want to make uh actually i'll pull up a realistic example here operations and say finance i'm going to go ahead and make that private and that'll be private just to me and whoever else i may want so um, there will be some permissioning that happens and we use um, permissions often in combination with uh, automations so we may create another list that's a client review list here and say, hey, when we get a task that gets to the client review phase, add it over to that list so they can actually see it at that point in time. And ClickUp's got this cool feature where we can show tasks in multiple lists. So um, those two get paired up. Now, the other cool thing that you can do is you can take uh, just about any view in the platform and you can make that view a public view. So I'm gonna go back up here I'm going to go to this client view that's built here. And so you can see we've done a couple different things. We've hidden all the subtasks. We've grouped it differently. In fact, let's change this again. We'll just group it by none or sort it uh, in a specific way or however, however we want to set up this view. And in this case, I want to show uh, whatever I want to show. I want to show um, what list it's tied to. And I want to hide the due date or I want to hide the priority create anything that I'd like to here and then share that specific view as a public view. You've got expiration uh, options depending on what plane you're on. But then you can pick and choose um, in terms of opening those tasks, whether you're going to allow clients with that public view to be able to see anything inside of it. And if so, what they have access to see. I can do the same thing with other view, uh, other view types as well. If I'm on the calendar and I want to go share a calendar view, you can do the same thing. Often when we've got a client, uh, an agency who's working and they've been in Basecamp or in Trello, uh, those tools have been around for a while. They're well-established. Clients are pretty familiar. And so there's some concern about what's sharing with clients going to look like again. You can replicate. This is one of the highlights of ClickUp is you can replicate most of the same stuff. One thing I would definitely recommend just as a pro tip would be make sure that all of those things um, you are documenting how you want clients to interact with you and you give that to clients as a resource so that when you're sending them something those first handful of times they can get up to speed and if their um, if their team changes over time you can uh, you can run through and uh, and walk through those changes or they can they can do that on their own on their own time um, and know how to use the tool cool so I just ran through a lot there um, when when this gets set up correctly, Agencies who are streamlining their ops on ClickUp are benefiting from you know, a single platform that's their, their single source of truth. When you need to go look something up, it's not asking what platform it's on. It's in ClickUp. 
by creating all that work in one place with the right hierarchy and structure and then leveraging correct views to go see it and using project management tools like dependencies, notifications, comments, that type of stuff, you're creating clarity for everyone from kind of the individual contributor role to the team manager role to the agency ownership and leadership. That clarity always turns into more profitable decision making when you've got clarity in terms of what your profitability looks like in a specific area. You're able to make better decisions and ultimately allow you to deliver better work faster for your clients, which increases client retention, internal team happiness. It really creates two virtuous cycles at the same time. The first one is on the client side. Uh, we're getting better work out to clients. We're able to do it faster. We're creating better client retention. Better client retention leads to more referrals, leads to more client. You know, that, that virtuous cycle is happening on one side. On the other side, we see it happening with the internal team as well. Um, there's less frustration. There's less stress around all these things are all over the place. Now, uh, it's not uh, nirvana. There's still a lot of work that happens in any well-run agency and a lot of things that need to get out the door. But when you give team members clarity, um, we've seen client or internal team retention numbers go up, more profitable in the firm, obviously allows you to pay your people better, allows you to recruit better people. So there's a couple different virtuous cycles that happen off the back end of getting your operational infrastructure in place. So this is one of those things that when you get it right, the time that goes into optimizing it and building it out, it can feel like a lot. It feels like we're not making a ton of progress at the beginning. But that investment to get it right, whatever that is, is worth it if you can truly get to that point um, to streamline it. So I'm going to pause here. We've got 12 minutes left. I want to get into some Q&A. And before we get to that, um, I've got one specific thing to help you streamline your ops. If you are using ClickUp, you want a second set of eyes on it. Uh, or if you're not using ClickUp and you want to talk through what you're currently using and whether it even makes sense to move to ClickUp, there's some... Um, there's some reasons why we'll tell people not to move to ClickUp or not to move to ClickUp yet. Um, for most agencies, most of the time, it's a great fit, but that's not every agency all the time. You're welcome to go to zenpilot.com slash chat. Um, Brandon on the call here, John from the team, myself, uh, will spend 20 minutes kind of digging into your current situation and help you streamline from there. So thank you for your time. I appreciate you watching.